See, throughout Scripture, all of Scripture, God makes it very, very clear that he desires to connect with us, to actually sit and connect with us. How cool is that? I mean, look at us. We're, we're fallen human beings. Uh, many of us stray, and even as Christians, we go our own way sometimes. We have, we have these corrections. And we think to ourselves, would God really want to connect with us? I mean, really? But the answer is absolutely yes. In, in this society, very too, too often, we get into the, the checklist mentality because we are a very industrious people here in the United States. So let's look at this checklist for Christian. Okay, let's check out the list. Went to church on Sunday. We read our daily devotion, and in some cases, that's the daily crumb because it's like a paragraph. Really? Uh, pray for 30 seconds before your meal. Oh, I prayed for today. You write a check to uh, Heartfelt Radio. You write a check to Salvation Army, whatever. You wrote a check. You supported something good. You encouraged somebody. Great. Check. You apologize to somebody who maybe you offended. Check. Check, 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 check. All good, right? They're all good things. But have you actually spent time with the Father at his feet, listening, and just wanting to be in his presence? Like that, like that kid, Gage. He felt the joy of just sitting in the presence of God. Really cool. All right, let's redo that list again. You ready? For those of you that perhaps are married, Let's redo that list for married couples. Said good morning to your spouse. Jack, shovel down an egg. And, well, you didn't really engage in conversation. You ate a nose in the paper, but you ate. Check. Went to work. Earned wages. Check. That's good. Came home. Immediately fell asleep on the couch because you had a long day. Check. Did you actually have any heart-to-heart -heart time with, with your soulmate in that day? You checked off the, all the boxes, but did you really engage with your wife? Last night, when I got home, uh, you know, I always try and look for a vehicle to, to sit down and enjoy my wife's company. And sometimes it can be just sitting down and yapping, which we do often, sometimes, it's like last night, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm in for a mindless game. And we pulled out one of these ring toss games and we were just mindlessly enjoying each other's company, doing this ring toss and just chatting about whatever happened. Connection, connection. It went way beyond the check mark box and the check mark mentality that we all have. I'll tell you where, where my special place is every morning when I get up Typically, the house is quiet. Sally's still asleep, and Noah most of the time is left for work. I wander downstairs. I do my usual things in the kitchen, start getting things ready. But we only have one window that looks east in our home. It's a big picture window, and that's where I wander and I watch. I, I just look. I look at the sunrise, listen to the birds sing, watch the world come to life. And it's there for me that that veil of separation between earthly things and heavenly things for me is strangely thin. It's almost like I could pop my hand through it and put my hand or even a part of my body even into eternity. Jesus talked a little bit about that when he prayed, when he gave us the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven. What did I miss? On earth. On earth as it is in heaven. How can that be unless we sit at the feet of God? and invite that veil to disappear. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can't 
personify that part of the prayer if we all have a escapism mentality. Am I looking forward to the rapture? Oh yeah, absolutely. But I'm not gonna hide my basement until that happens because the Lord tells us to occupy until I return. Occupy until I return. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. It's up to me to bring heavenly principles here on earth to the point where I'm salt and I'm light. Jesus, Jesus, the only 